Okay, in this video, we want to. I'm going to talk about vertical and horizontal graph uh, transformation. So, all this deals with is basically just shifting graphs around. Okay, so the first part um, we'll do here, we're going to talk about horizontal transformations, and the idea is if everywhere there's an x in your formula, you replace it with um, x plus or minus a number, it's going to shift the graph horizontally. If the k value is positive, it actually shifts it to the left. If the k value is negative, it's going to shift it to the right that many units. So, I don't know, sometimes people feel like this is a little backwards, but, you know, it, it's not. It's the way it should be, but it um, feels to me a little backwards in a sense the first time I saw it. So, suppose we have the graph y equals x squared. Well, if I go to graph y equals the quantity x plus 2 squared, Notice what I did was I replaced my original x with an x plus 2. Okay, so the plus 2 shifts it not positive 2 units to the right, but instead it shifts it 2 units to the left. So we're going to get the same graph. Again, my artistry is not the best, so forgive that. But it's supposed to be the exact same graph, not, not stretched or anything like that. Just pushed a couple units to the left. Likewise, um, we can do vertical transformations. And vertical transformations is pretty much the same idea. Um, on this one, we're going to basically just, instead of replacing x with a number, we're just going to add a number onto the outside. So if we add um, k to the outside, it's going to shift it k units vertically. And here, it, maybe it's kind of more straightforward. If the k value is positive, it shifts it upwards, so in the positive direction. Direction. If k is negative, it's going to shift it downwards, so in the negative direction. So again, here's y equals x squared. Notice here my original x squared was left alone. I just wrote a plus 2 on the outside, so again, that moves that graph up 2 units. So let's graph just a couple here real quick to hopefully make some, some sense out of this stuff. Let me squeeze it down here a little bit. Okay, so the first graphs I'm going to do, I'm going to graph all A, B, and C. I'm going to graph 1 over x plus 2, um, 1 over the quantity x plus 2, and then 1 over the quantity x plus 2, and then minus 1. So, um, again, so what we're doing here, we need to know the basic graph of 1 over x. And 1 over x, again, roughly looks like the one here in the top right. So that's kind of my starting point. I now need to use that to come up with the other ones. Um, and 1 over x has a vertical asymptote on the y-axis. And it has a horizontal asymptote along the x-axis. So let's keep that in mind. Well, 1 over x plus 2, all that does is shift the whole graph up 2 units. So my asymptote that was originally at 0 is now going to be at the line y equals 2. Um, and again, it still has that same basic shape to it otherwise. Okay, so the plus 2 on the outside simply moves the graph up 2 units. Okay, on part B, I have replaced the original x with x plus 2. So that's like our very first example. The x plus 2, again, is going to shift the graph 2 units to the left. So that means my asymptote that was originally at the x-axis, excuse me, the asymptote, the, whole, the vertical asymptote that was the y-axis is now going to be at the line x equals negative 2. Um, and again, otherwise, it still has that same basic shape to it. Okay, so again, forgive my rough artistry here. Last but not least, if we want to gra graph 1 over um, x plus 2 minus 1, well, all that does is it takes our graph from part B and it shifts it, well, down one unit. So we still have the vertical asymptote at negative 2, but now my horizontal asymptote, instead of being at the x-axis, is now going to get moved down to y equals negative 1. And again, the graph, um, it should be a little careful. So the graph should cross below 
would have a negative y-intercept. But again, otherwise, it has that same basic shape to it. Okay, so kind of a, a rough little graph there, but hopefully it's making some sense. Let me try to do a couple others here before we run out of time. Same idea. Um, again, so in this case, we've got x cubed uh, minus 1, x minus 1 cubed, and then x minus 1 cubed plus 2. Again, um, y equals x cubed, kind of our starting point is the graph up here on the top right. Um, it goes through the point 0, 0. Again, part A, x cubed minus 1, all that's going to do to the graph is just move it down one unit. So instead of going through 0, 0, it'll go through 0, negative 1. But then otherwise, it should have that same basic shape to it. Okay? It looks a little flattened out here, so again, I apologize about that. It should be this exact original graph, just moved down one unit. So I tried to squeeze it in there a little bit, and it looks kind of weird. So... Part B, the x minus 1 cubed. Okay, so now I replace the x with a negative 1. So this is a horizontal shift, and it shifts it positive 1 unit to the right. So now instead of going through 0, 0, it'll go through 1, 0. And again, still it'll have that same basic shape as x cubed. Um, Last but not least, if we graph x minus 1 cubed plus 2, okay, so all this does is the minus 1 shifts it to the right one unit, the plus 2 shifts it up two units. So I can basically just take my part B graph and move that up two units. So this point that was originally here at 1, 0 is now going to get moved up to the point 1, 2, after I move it to the right 1 and up 2. And then again, it still has the same basic shape to it. So, all right, so I hope this makes a little bit of sense here. So, um, it's just recognizing again, have you replaced the x with something, or have you just kind of tacked a number onto the outside? Um, so, maybe one more little question here. So suppose you already have the graph of x cubed times 3 to the x over sine x. So I'm sure a lot of you looking at this are, you know, in algebra. And maybe you've never seen this function sine of x. And this is just a trigonometric function. Um, so if you haven't seen it, don't, don't you know, get too nervous too yet. Um, the main idea, again, is just we're replacing, we're replacing x's with what? Okay. So notice... Um, Okay, so I guess I should ask the follow-up. We want to graph now this new um, graph, x plus 1 squared times 3 to the x plus 1 times sine of x plus 1 minus 4. We just want to think what would that look like in terms of transformations compared to the original. Well, notice all I did was I took the original x's everywhere and I plugged in x plus 1's. So everywhere there was an x, I plugged in x plus 1's, x plus 1's. So again, what does that x plus 1 effect do? Well, again, the x plus 1 replaced, throwing in that plus 1 is going to shift the graph, the original, um, it would shift it one unit to the left. And then the minus 4 would simply shift the original down four units. So if you had that original one, you could come up with this new graph real easily by just nudging it one unit to the left and then down four units. Okay, so I have no clue what this graph looks like, but again, I'm just trying to get the pattern recognition happening. So um, if you don't know what some basic graphs look like, I have some videos out there of them. I quickly sketch a bunch of them, so feel free to take a look at those. If you have any questions, shoot me an email. Um, and hey, I hope this helps. Good luck out there.